Hello and welcome back to another guide for Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look into 10 things that I wish I knew before starting Xenonauts 2. A summary of the most important findings from my side in a concise and no repetition manner. So let's jump into the 10. Tip number two, building multiple radar relays increase the detection radius. Whenever you are trying to build a base, you see three circles. The inner one is for one radar relay, the middle one for two and the outer one for three. Plan accordingly, you would want to have three radar relays, but you also would want to make sure that at the beginning you at least have some land mass to play with. So that is going to be very important. You can only detect UFO activity within the detection radius of your bases. Tip number three. Certain base buildings can be upgraded, so plan accordingly. In particular, the generators can be upgraded later to Alarium generators. The laboratories can be upgraded to quantum laboratories relatively soon. The workshops can be upgraded to nano workshops relatively soon and the missile batteries down here can first be upgraded to laser batteries and then later to gauss batteries dealing more damage. What does that mean in reality? You might only need three instead of four generators because the alarium generators deal, create way more energy. You potentially only need two, maybe three laboratories instead of um, four because the nano laboratories are actually quite good. Uh, the nano uh, quantum laboratories, the nano workshops are so good that you definitely only need two workshops of it. And the missile batteries, if you are upgrading them to Gauss um, uh, level, three batteries will be enough to kill every single UFO 100% of the time. So there's no chance that they come through your base. Keep that in mind when you are talking about the upgrades. There are other upgrades like the one uh, with the medical center or the one uh, for the radar array which will not uh, influence the amount of centers or arrays that you're going to build but for those buildings in particular you might only want to have three generators two to three laboratories two uh, nano workshops and three missile batteries tip number four utilize the carry capacity efficiently one of the things that I learned later in the game is that shield bearers in particular have an odd situation where once the shield is gone they are quite useless and oftentimes also wounded. Think about maybe putting a sniper rifle into their backpack and at the beginning of a mission just drop that down on the ground so the moment that a shield is gone they can revert back to the sniper rifle equally. You could uh, with a normal rifleman put a shield into their uh, primary hand and a rifle into their backpack and if you're comfortable with it drop the shield in the first round then equip the rifle and just have uh, spare shields i didn't do that because it uh, hampered the first turn but it is a very legit tactic that i wish i knew before starting the game Next tip, and whilst it is impossible to use alien plasma rifles, it is very much possible to use alien plasma grenades. So the next time that you find yourself looking through the options of looting enemies, such as cleaners, for instance, you can see those nice little 70 damage alien plasma grenades. You can put them in, and as you can see, you can use them right away. So Happy hunting, once you find out that you can actually use them, they are incredibly powerful. Very, very strong weapon that I wish I knew before starting the game. Tip number six, utilization of flashbangs. If you are entering your room specifically within uh, the confounds of the alien um, UFOs, you want to make sure that you are not running into Overwatch. The safest way to do that is charge in, use a flashbang grenade, which will apply suppression, which I wish I knew beforehand. Once suppression is applied, you can actually do whatever you want until the end of the turn, as they have zero time units left in order to re retaliate with anything that is happening. I wish I knew that much earlier. The flashbangs are incredibly powerful because they are offering you the option to freely attack without any retaliation. However, 
suppression will disappear at the end of your turn, which means after that, it's pretty much um, free game for everyone. So keep that in mind when you're applying it. Tip number seven. Directly adjacent soldiers can shoot over other kneeling soldiers without any chance of hitting them. And that really counts for any adjacency, even uh, diagonal adjacency. So the name of the game, therefore, is make sure that you look at your proper aiming angles. In this example, we're rushing into a UFO. All of the soldiers to the south are able to shoot over one another, even if I would place them closer to each other. And I leave ample opportunity for the snipers here to take a couple of pot shots onto them, uh, the enemies that is, without risking uh, to get um, a hit in with any of our soldiers. So tip number seven, Put your soldiers adjacent to one another, kneel the front line down. Even if the back uh, soldiers are also kneeling, they can still shoot uh, easily over their previous counterparts at no risk of hitting them. Tip number eight. Players are extending the vision range during night. I wish I would have known that beforehand. Aliens do not suffer from vision range during night. You, however, majorly do. And flares are a great option to extend that vision range. On top of it, turning around for throwing flares does not take any additional uh, time units, which is rare. So take this as a free option to actually go wherever you want and make sure that everything is really well lit, as you can see. You're freely turning. You even have enough time left over to turn or hunker down whenever you want. So great option. I wish I knew how good flares are and how important they are for night missions. Tip number nine. Explosives destroy loot, but only if they land the killing blow. On top of it, some explosives reduce armor quite nicely. Demolition charges in particular are great for both of that. They strip off a lot of armor from the target and if you open with them, you do not only remove cover but also reduce armor and you're not destroying any loot. But be mindful, if you're finishing aliens, you're going to lose their weapons and their loot in the process. As um, Dr. Valen often says, you might want to restrain yourself with the explosives. Just saying. Tip number 10 cover removal is essential. I wish I would have known that beforehand. It is absolutely crucial to remove most of the cover simply because it reduces uh, the aim penalties. Whether it is with a full auto weapon uh, that just removes all of uh, the cover in the way to then have clearer shots or whether it is at the beginning of the game in particular with your grenade launcher you will never go wrong with using cover removal as every single field of cover just reduces the chance of hitting the enemies they don't stack but the highest cover is being taken so the best uh, situation that you fi can find yourself in is with zero cover straight up shots into the target i wish i knew that beforehand and finally bonus tip number 11 in terms of uh, accuracy keep the following thing in mind there are a couple of things that stack within the game and you should be aware of it the penalties of a range cover smoke aka vision penalties and positioning all stack with one another but individually take the highest version of them what does that mean the ranged indicator uh, there's only one range indicator every weapon has a certain amount of range with a sniper 30 tiles the moment that you go above that range there is a drop off the sniper is the exception as there is a zero drop off but let's use the heavy weapon as an example that does have a 1.5 percent drop off per tile after 20 tiles so that is penalty number one which stacks with the cover penalty cover penalty is typically 20 percent for low cover up to 50 percent for harder cover uh, which could be corners up to a hundred percent for total concealment so soft cover 20 percent and range can stack thirdly vision penalties that could be 
night vision um, penalty for just barely uh, seeing the enemy but more often it is smoke whenever you blow something up or use smoke grenades every field of smoke incurs a cumulative 20 percent penalty however night and smoke do not cause the same penalty to stack just like cover where you're only taking the highest penalty so 50 percent for instance for a corner it doesn't add up all of the other 20 percent or 40 percent cover penalties on top of it and then finally crouching which is another 20 percent penalty so say if you're trying to hit someone in a long range behind some cover who is crouching and on top of it there might be one uh, field of smoke in between that is a range penalty of whatever the penalty is say 10 fields uh, uh, extra range here with a heavy weapon would be 15 percent then you get the cover penalty that could be 20 or 40 percent depending on uh, what cover they are standing behind then on top you get one uh, tile of smoke uh, in our example which is another 20 percent penalty and then on top you maybe give the penalty for them crouching of another 20 percent so you could end up with an 80 percent penalty the way the penalties work is whatever the hit chance is they are reducing it by x percent so if there is a lot of smoke and cover in the way and if the enemy is hunkering no matter which weapon you're using you're not going to hit respectively the enemy is not going to hit which is more why i'm saying that be mindful of the um, ob uh, objects that stand between you and the enemy because if you take good cover you are not going to get hit and that is potentially the most valuable tip for you out of all of them good luck on your endeavor xenonauts 2 is an unforgiving game and i hope the 10 tips here plus the bonus one were giving you good enough uh, start to beat the game finally thanks for watching Take a look at all of the other guides that I have for Xenonaut 2 and good luck on your journey. Take care.